Hey, did you guys know that planners create dead weight loss? Well, let me guess. Let me think about this for a second. Planners, dead weight loss. Probably four words that shouldn't uh, occur together. But if you hang tight in this video, I'll explain to you why that may not be such a bad idea. Hang tight. Okay, so in this particular video, we're going to talk about how city planners, urban planners, they create a thing called dead weight loss. Uh, this video is a much shorter video of a set of videos, I have a much longer one than I did a while back, but the, the information inside it is really, really good, so I thought I would show it here and share a little bit more information around it. Now, in this case, like I said, I made it real short, and I'm going to put some commentary on both the front side and the back side. So when I'm done, I'm actually going to give you some key takeaways. But if you actually go down into the description down below, you'll see the links to the rest of them so that you can, the rest of the video, so that you can watch them at your leisure when you want to. They're good. I'd watch them if you get a chance in there. Okay, so dead weight loss. What is that? Well, what you're going to find out from this video is that when we take a property that may be zoned as an as a great example, might be zoned as ag or whatever the lowest denominator is in your city or whatever that case may be. And we now change its zoning type, its property type. Maybe we make it now industrial property. But what's happened with it is we've changed its type and we've made, made it to where it can't be anything else without getting a variance or something like that. So the process of doing so makes it inelastic. That's the term we use in economics because it can't be anything else, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show what the effects are of making property types inelastic in the short run. And it's important to remember that this is in the short run. All right, so I hope you like this video. If you do, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you get more videos as they come out. All right, enjoy the video. All right, so here's what happens when we put zoning in. So if you take a look at the way we model it, this is we're restricting development. So when we restrict development, we take certain elements out, we cause a supply in the short run of, of development to become uh, inelastic. And so it begins to rotate the supply line up to here. Now, I want you to take a look here. So we had the supply and demand, okay? You're gonna notice this nice little green triangle that occurs because of this introduction of this, this, uh, this inelastic line. This green triangle, and you're gonna see this come up quite regularly, is referred to as deadweight loss. This deadweight loss is, uh, is economic benefit that's lost to the economy. So these are the trade benefits that are lost, they're gone. They're not seen by either the producers or the demanders, they don't get the benefit of it, okay? So the trick in, in using land control of or taxing or anything like this is to minimize this triangle. So as this line rotates, it takes our Q1 supply and what it does, it restricts it. It makes it smaller, there's less of it, okay? And as a result, our, our P line here, our price line, goes from one price and it goes higher to the new line, okay? Well, this space up here represents the consumer surplus. This represents the producer surplus. This is also space that's lost. It's a gain to the city, but it's lost to the, to the market, okay? So again, if we restrict zoning, we're gonna take quantity and restrict it. So it moves to the left on our model, which means there's less. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, whatever that is, okay? And the price goes up. So this line now intersects between price and supply right here. And therefore the price line goes up. It causes an increase in the price of the property. All right. All right, so some of the key takeaways in this. Well, first of all, before we get to the key takeaways, you may have noticed I made a big boo-boo in this one uh, when I turned around and I said supply and demand. That's backwards. Uh, in this case, dem demand is going down and supply is going up. There are some circumstances where it can be backwards, uh, but in this case, it's not. So forgive me for that. Uh, but some of the key takeaways that you're going to get out of this is that it's not necessarily bad 
uh, that you've created this dead weight loss. This is clearly in the short run. This doesn't mean forever. What that does mean is that now that property actually has value greater than what it was in its previous holding. OK, so to a developer, this is not a bad thing. Now, to a consumer, it might cost him more money uh, in, the, in the short run. But in the long run, even that evens itself out. So that you cannot avoid dead weight loss. What you want to do, though, is design um, systems to where you minimize it. OK, and also a critical piece to it is the timing of it. So a great exercise here is let's say, for instance, you know that this particular use is Going to be more prevalent a couple of years from now by changing its type today the short run uh is where this dead weight loss is created so there's this economic loss that's in there but in the long run when that other industrial use may come available or that other use may come available now it's at market price and it's stabilized okay well i hope you enjoyed the video uh, on the end of this video i'm going to put a card up uh with some suggested videos for you all right thank you